It's time for the one and only, the premier, the only official podcast of Pro Rodeo. Your suit bosses are ready, so let's give it a go and talk some rodeo. Welcome inside another exciting episode of The Shoot Boss is the official podcast of Pro Rodeo. As we always are, it's Tanner and Tracy, and we got some great stuff coming your way here on The Shoot Boss. As Tracy, a little bit later on, we'll sit down with Keith Merrington for eight questions, and then a special edition from the racetrack. We'll have uh, Rocker Steiner, and who was uh, Rocker's special guest this weekend? Uh, Parker Retzloff, the Xfinity Series driver in NASCAR for the Funkaway team, and Jordan, Jordan Anderson Racing, and it was a great experience. Yeah, so we'll have all of that coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned. That'll be in segment three here of the Shoot Bosses. But as we always do, let's get things kicked off with our Pro Rodeo props. And Tracy, uh, you know, I've had a chance to watch a lot of these the last, I guess, almost a month and a half now. But uh, our 12 Pro Rodeo circuits and the circuit final host, you know, they really put so much into this every single year. And it really shows it's a great product. And, you know, it gives Cowboys outside of our maybe top 30 a chance to really get out there and show what they can do. Yeah, I mean, the circuit finals rodeo is where they want to be, and then obviously the NFR Open. I mean, you've guy guy gets on a heater at the circuit finals early in the season, then things start going well in January and February, and then they go to the NFR Open. We watch guys win over 30 grand there, and they could push them to the NFR possibly. And this circuit system allows, I mean, it's pushed a lot of great guys into it because yeah. the money counts towards the standings. When I first started here, and for several years, it didn't count towards the standings, it just counted towards the circuit standings. Now that it counts towards the world standings, it makes a big difference, but it still gives these guys the opportunity that aren't full-time guys to compete against some of the best and win a lot of money. Yeah, and so we uh, really want to send a shout out to our circuits. We know they do a great job, not only during the circuit finals, but but all year long there for our pro rodeo props. It's time for our short round, and Tracy, we got a busy one, and we'll start things off with what was breaking news for us last week. Casey Field, six-time PRCA world champion, the best bareback rider of all time, calls it a career. I know that you sat down and talked with Casey a little bit. He gave you some great stuff. And, man, just just an end to, to one of the best careers that we've seen in pro rodeo. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and Casey, Casey's six-time world champion. No one in bareback riding history in the PRCA has won more than him. I mean, he, he accomplished that record in 2021. He finished second in 2022. His titles were spread out 11 through 14 and then 20 and 21. He had 25 90 point rides just since 2011. Some guys never get a 90 point ride in their career. And he, he was a machine. I mean, he's fundamentally sound, great guy, very good at what he does. And I, I know it hurt. I mean, based on the conversation yeah. I had not qualifying for the NFR, he came up a little short this year. And he's 36. I mean, at some point, you have to make the full push. You're either all in or you're all out. And I think he made the decision, as he told me, that this was going to be his last year. Whether he got to the NFR and won a world championship, which he wanted to, or whether he didn't qualify, which unfortunately that happened to him. But he's just so fundamentally said He's the son of a Hall of Famer in Lewis Field, who, the late Lewis Field, who passed away. And, I mean, he followed in his footsteps. And I don't know that we'll see anybody better in terms of winning that many titles in bareback. Six titles in bareback is a lot. I mean, you have to have, I mean, Casey was a rookie, I mean, what would you say, 16 years I think he rode. So he won six out of 16 years. I mean, that's pretty good odds as it is. So I mean, I don't know that we'll ever see a guy as good as him. We might see guys as talented as him, but in terms of the record book, I don't know. Yeah, and Casey, you know, it's just longevity. You know, he was able to do it for so long at such a high level, and he's just one of those guys, Tracy, that always had that drive, and he says, you know, towards the back end, that drive was more focused towards his family and, yeah. you know, wanting to, to take his, his family life and his professional ventures outside the sport to the next level, and I, I don't have any doubt in my mind that Casey will be successful at that just because that's the type of guy and competitor and worker he is. Well, that's guys like him, I mean, I compare him to like Joe Montana and Michael Jordan. It's in their DNA. I mean, they almost refuse to not succeed. That that's all they know is just be a compulsive when they work and do things. And I mean, he was excited to go to the gym. Yeah. He, said, he, he was excited to say, well, I don't know if I can make myself go to the gym. And he said, then I got up and I'm not sore anymore. I want to go to the gym. I usually go to the gym to get work, work the kinks out and keep in shape. And I mean, as we well know, the rodeo world beats you up. So, and his kids is as people know like your kids only grow up once mm -hmm. and if you keep following that dream and it's not the dream it's it's been the ultimate dream for Casey Field his kids are getting older his daughter's you know 10 years old and I mean and he's got younger sons and it's like at some point when you start missing things they do that is really important 
then it, that starts weighing on you emotionally and mentally too. And he's accomplished everything he needed to accomplish. And I, ex, as you said, I would be stunned if he's not highly successful in the business world. Yeah, so congratulations there to Casey Field. Heck of a career. We'll miss covering you, champ. Also on our short round here, Scott Walton uh, was the recipient of the 2023 Janita Barnes Lifetime Achievement Award. And uh, Scott, one of those guys that, uh, Tracy, just really put his life and you know what he did into rodeo to try and make the sport better and you know make the committee he was working with you know make their performance that much better for the fans of rodeo yeah his dad's title started the nile rodeo in billings montana 50 years ago and that's when he got involved as a little kid basically yeah. and he was involved with whatever he he got his big break being involved with harry vold the late uh, hall of fame stock contractor he worked with harry from 82 to 96 and he started doing some other things, and then he establishes Scott Walton scoreboards. I mean, that's what he yeah, does. Yeah, I remember seeing and, Walton scoreboards everywhere. And, and that's he goes all around the world and does scoreboards. He works the biggest rodeos, Fort Worth and San Antonio. He's been involved in the NFR, I believe he told me, for more than 40 years, somehow, some way, and he's going to be back again this year. And when you're good at something, you find your niche. I mean, and he found the niche of scoreboards probably way proactive than a yeah. lot of a lot of people ever would have imagined. And he's found his niche in the rodeo world, and he's obviously great at it. And congratulations to him. I mean, you spend over 50 years in a sport, and you're great at it. This is how you get the Danita Barnes Award, so congratulations to him. Yeah, also all the finalists that were named to that list as well, still uh, very deserving in themselves. Also coming up, uh, we're going to have our Resist All Rookie Lunch, and that's on our short round. That's not coming up, though, until the NFR time. It'll be December 7th or the 16th is when the NFR is, but this will be held on December 12th, Tracy, and tickets are on sale. And this is a cool thing. You know, you get a chance to sit down and see all the rookies receive their Rookie of the Year honors, but then you also get to, you know, hear the story of past rookies, champions mm -hmm. that have come and gone, guys like Trevor Brazil, who, you know, obviously turned out his career to be, you know, the, the best we've ever seen. And this is just a cool event. Tickets are on sale, and I encourage fans to go out there, purchase them. It's something really cool that the public can do during the NFR. Yeah, tickets go fast. There's not a ton of them. This is, I believe, the first time they've actually sold tickets to the public to go. Oh, wow, gotcha. Uh, that's why it's such a big deal. It's from noon to 2 Pacific time on the 12th at the South Point, and I know Tuff Hedeman scheduled to speak, Luke Branquino, and Trevor Brazil. I mean, all Hall of Famers. Yeah. I mean, that's as good as it gets. And no they speak to the rookies basically to tell them where they were and how they got to where they became. Obviously, Trevor's the gold standard of all Cowboys. But and, and for rookies to hear that, it means a lot. I mean, and it might change their life in a five-minute conversation with Tuff Hedeman or who knows. So, I mean, and we have some great rookies this year and several that qualified for the NFR and – it's an exciting time for those, and it's their night. It's their night at the NFR that night as well. So, I mean, a big deal for them, and we're glad to be a part of it. Yeah, we encourage you, if you're interested in attending that event, you can go on ProRodeo.com, get some more information on that upcoming event. And it is almost time for our eight-question segment, Tracy. And uh, this week's episode, we're sitting down with the Calgary Stampede's Keith Merrington. I think his uh, official title is Director of Rodeo and Chuck Wagon Races yeah. or something like that. Yeah. But we just know Keith as, you know, being the stock contractor of one of the best if not the best right now, you know, group of horses going down the road in Calgary Stampede. Yeah, I mean, he's got dozens upon dozens that are going to the NFR. He had, I believe he told us, 46 that went to the yeah. Canadian National Finals Rodeo that just got completed. And, I mean, yeah, they've proved over the years, last several years, that their horses are some, their rough stock, some of the best out there. I mean, not to say that others don't, Frontier Rodeo and others have great stock, but, I mean, time in and time out, it seems like every time there's a high 90-point ride, it's from the Calgary Stampede, and Keith was uh, fun to play along with us with the eight questions. Keith also mentioned they got a horse coming. You'll have to keep your eye out. We're not going to spoil anything, though, for Keith. But here we go. We'll sit down with them. Here's Keith Merrington with eight questions. Biggest rodeo moment? Uh, biggest rodeo moment would be uh, Explosive Sky setting the world record with uh, Logan Hay. Describe the Calgary Stampede in one word. Unique. Tim Hortons or Starbucks? Neither. Favorite movie? Two of them, actually. Mrs. Doubtfire and movie I just saw, We Have a Ghost. Favorite restaurant? Earl's. First car? Uh, Chevy. Favorite sports team? Calgary Flames. Describe grated coconut in one word. Uh, versatile. 
And Trace, you can just tell Keith, uh, you know, being an old rodeo guy, being around Calgary Stampede, the actual rodeo and their stock contracting firm, just a great guy. And he has seen a lot in the sport of rodeo, and he's really seen it change over the years. Yeah, and I mean, he, he's seen it change. He's seen Graded Coconut, one of theirs, get into the Hall of Fame. It's just been a, it's been a really cool deal for him. And he's kind of the spokesman for the Calgary Stampede, at least to us. And I mean, like I said, their accomplishments go without saying. They've got a resume that's just dotted with accolades. No doubt about it. So we really appreciate Keith sitting down with us. We're going to take a quick break here on the Shoot Boss. There's much more coming your way at the back end. We mentioned we'll sit down with Rocker Steiner, also Parker Retzloff with the, uh, the NASCAR world. It was great to catch up with them. Much more coming your way after the break. Some call it following in the footsteps. Others call it handing over the reins. But when it comes to bestowing our values to the next generation, we simply call it a way of life. Cinch, lead, don't follow. Welcome back into the official podcast of Pro Rodeo. Tanner Bar, Tracy Rink here with the PRCA, as always. And uh, Tracy, we're coming up on a, an important time. We mentioned uh, that we've got the uh, national final steer roping coming up next weekend. The NFR is going to be right around the corner. So a lot of exciting things happening in rodeo right now. Yeah, the NFSR is one of my favorite events. You it's love that the thing. Kansas <laughs> Star. I mean, it's so convenient and great champions are crowned and the money's gotten so much better for them. I know they want the money even better because they're, they're competitors, but it, it's just it's just a great environment, a great event, and obviously it leads into the breakaway roping finals, the fifth and sixth. The South and then Point, yeah. At the South Point, and then it rolls into the NFR, and gosh, gosh knows how exciting the NFR is, and especially this year, I'm, it'd be probably more exciting than ever. Better pull your boots up, Rink. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting ready to have a rocky road. As we always do here in the Shoot Bosses, it's time for our Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame Spotlight. And this time we're going to go to 2019 Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame inductee Jerome Robinson. Robinson uh, qualified for his first of 11 Wrangler National Finals rodeos. That first one came back in 1970, Tracy. He never won a world title, but this is a guy that, uh, you know, we sit there and look at. He did much more for the sport almost after he was done, you know, yeah. serving on the PRCA Board of Directors. He was the vice president. He went on to to be a part of why we get to stand in this building here at the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. Yeah, and he was the brains behind starting ProCom. Yeah. I mean, that was his big big contribution. I mean, he did a lot of great things in rodeo and for the PRCA, but he started ProCom, which changed everything. I mean, you're dial going down the road hoping to get a payphone and sitting there and hoping you get into a rodeo, and they made it computer generated with ProCom way ahead of its time in the early, I, I believe it started in 79 is when ProCom wow. started. I mean, and imagine that. Like, yeah. that's that's like the internet in 79. That, that's, that was earth-moving stuff, life-changing stuff. Did you the have PRC. internet back then? No, I didn't. <laughs> I, I was pre-internet. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, unbelievable, man. Yeah, no doubt about it. We mentioned Jerome. He was a big part of the PRCA research and the development committee for not only the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame, but our headquarters here at the PRCA. So there's your Hall of Fame spotlight, Jerome Robinson, a 2019 inductee. We move on into our Did You Know segment, Tracy. I know you know this one. You're a rodeo historian, but I don't know about all of our fans out there. Did you know that only 10 Cowboys ever in the sport of rodeo since this thing got started have ever won the illustrious rodeo triple crown this is when you win three different world titles and three different events the most recent we all know it's trevor brazil back in 2008 and 2010 and uh tracy we got a gentleman this year stetson wright we know all about stetson wright he's got a real shot this year he's leading yeah. the bulls he's leading the saddle bronc he's leading the all around we know it's a 10 tough 10 nights in vegas but stetson wright's got as about a good a chance right now as we've seen in quite a while yeah, I mean, because before the chances he had, you just weren't sure if he could win one or the yeah. other. He's obviously favored in, well, the all-arounds, a foregone conclusion. But the Bulls, there's been no one better. I mean, without mm -hmm. question. Can guys get on a heater and pass him? Certainly. But he, if if history is any indication, he's rode well at the NFR, in Bulls has, specifically. Yeah. Saddle Brunk, it's kind of been hit or miss at times, but he won a world title there as well in 21. And that would be, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, the one I would think I don't he'd, know about that, he'd have the <laughs> toughest one would be Saddle Bronc. Just yeah. because Saddle Bronc, they, guys don't get bucked off, and it depends more heavily on the draw. Because Stetson can stay on, and I mean, I, I, I don't want to jinx the guy, but <laughs> last year he could have easily ridden 10 bulls. Yeah, and he rode, he rode eight. I mean, 
you ride eight bulls at the NFR, your chances of being in the top two in the world go up exponentially just based on the money you can win and, and being on the average. So that would be the saddle bronc would be the one that I think would be the his least of the other two out of, outside toughest, of bulls yeah. for tough for him to win. But it'd be great for us. I mean, anytime a guy wins a triple crown, I mean, it's unbelievable. Like in baseball with Carl Yastrzemski in 67 and then Miguel Carrera won. I mean, and it took like 40 years later for a guy to win the Triple Crown in Major League Baseball. It just doesn't happen a lot. I mean, Trevor had chances multiple times, but mm -hmm. to win three events at the highest level in rodeo is extremely difficult. And maybe this is just Stetson's year to do it. And we're definitely going to be keeping our eye on that. Just one of the many storylines that we'll have coming your way here at the 2023 Wrangler National Finals Rodeo presented by Teton Ridge. It's time for our viewer questions, as we always do. You can send it to us anytime. Heck, if you even have our cell phone number, shoot us a text. Say, well, you'd like to get this on the Shoot Bosses. But you can also just tag us, hashtag the Shoot Bosses on Instagram, Facebook, uh, X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can send it to us. We'll try and get it here on the show. Today's comes from John. Jonathan on Instagram, Tracy, and this one is going to be, what is the Ram Top Gun Award that they give out in Vegas, and how is it decided who wins it? I'll start this off and then let you kind of go into it. So the Ram Top Gun Award obviously uh, is an honor that's given to the Cowboy that wins the most money in a single event in Las Vegas, and uh, you know, this has really turned out to be a pretty lucrative award that a lot of people will say, you know, if you end up winning a world title, it's most likely going to go hand in hand. You have a shot at the Ram Top Gun Award, but also, you know, it just proves who is the best for 10 nights in Las Vegas? Yeah, last year it was Zeke Thurston. And, I mean, they, it used to be the most money won in all events, but Trevor won in 2010, and they came to the realization right away, like, <laughs> no one was going to beat Trevor. I mean, because... It'd be tough to beat Stetson nowadays. Right, and, and Stetson as well, if you counted his two events. I mean, so they went single event, which made it fair for everybody. But they have the voucher for the truck. They get the Montana Silversmith, all the swag. Commemorative and, gun, I believe, yeah, as yeah, well. And yeah, and I mean, it's, it's, it's an ultimate honor. I mean, because it means for that NFR, you were the best. And... Clayton Bigelow's won it. Guys like that have won it. Casey Fields won it in 21 when he won his last world title. So, I mean, like you said, if you're winning that award, it means 99% of the time you're probably a world champion in that event. And it's one of those things that guys look at, this is a cherry on top. Yeah. You know, you get a world title, you're all pumped, and then you figure out you're going to get a big voucher for a truck and all these great awards. Tracy mentioned that uh, Zeke Thurston last year won over $256,000 in Las Vegas. I think the uh, the record for it might still be Haley Kinzel. Haley Kinzel in 2020. Yeah, 270000 yeah, she won she, in Arlington. She smoked the barrels in the Globe Life Field. I mean, Honestly, she was so far ahead, and I think a couple nights she didn't run sister, so she probably could have won more money. She was in a complete zone there. I think she won like seven rounds. It was crazy. And, and, but, but that goes to tell you how yeah, much, how how much it is, yeah. A, how difficult it is and how much money you can win. I mean, Zeke, I mean, if you would have thought Zeke would have won the world, you probably could have asked his relatives, and they might not have thought he would have won it last year. Mm -hmm. But he got on a heater. Like we keep saying, I know it's cheesy, but like you get on momentum at the NFR and start placing one, two, and three in rounds and start adding up money, then you win the average then all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh i've won two hundred fifty thousand dollars at the nfr and all the money goes up this year so it should be even more exciting more more great things coming your way here on the shoot bosses we're going to send it down to buck and tracy buck's one of those characters that i don't know how the guy some somehow seems to get inside the prca or even in our vicinity but he's always got something interesting to say yeah buck's not quick he's not fast he's sudden well let's suddenly go down to buck here's your pro rodeo word of the day Hi, I'm Buck, correspondent for the Shoot Bosses. My word for the day is average, as in the average at a rodeo, two-head, three-head, four-head, you name it. A lot of people call me average. There ain't nothing average about Buck. It's not about standing out. It's about fitting in with our community, family, and friends. We stand for what's right, honoring the past and shaping the future, celebrating beliefs and values that forged America. And if we fall short, we climb back in the saddle because giving up isn't an option. Proud, fearless, unmatched. We are Pro Rodeo.
Welcome back into the Shoot Bosses podcast. Tanner and Tracy here with you, and we've got a couple of special guests joining us here today. It's Parker Retzloff and Rocker Steiner. And gentlemen, we're here at Phoenix Raceway. Uh, take us through uh, what you've been going on here uh, at, at the championship race. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're out here at the uh, Xfinity Series championship race. It's uh, nice to show him around and kind of get to experience and talk about uh, each other's sport. It's kind of a crazy experience to see what he does and also bring him into our world. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually crazy just like walking around here and how many people I've talked to that have actually, you know, been to rodeos, been to the finals, and uh, known who I was. Like I think uh, NASCAR and rodeo has such a um, similar fan base. Like a lot of the rodeo guys, rodeo fans are NASCAR fans, and NASCAR fans are rodeo fans. Um, obviously, you know, NASCAR is a lot bigger than rodeo is, but um, they share a lot of the same. I mean, they're I, in my eyes, they're the last, you know, two truly American sports. So, Rocker, you got to, and Parker, you, you did the pace car experience here this morning. What was that like? I mean, obviously, it's nothing new for Parker because he races for a living, but what was that like, Rocker? Man, it was, like, I mean, you don't realize how fast these cars are going. We were only, we weren't even going half as fast as what they do in the race, and they have, you know, what is it, 37 other cars on the track? And, uh, you know, we're just one car on the track going, we, we, we went a little faster than they told us to go. We were going, like, 117. Yep. And, uh, but hitting those corners, I mean, they come up so fast and you're going 117 miles an hour, then he just ducks off and zipping around the corner and I'm up against the window and she's in the back screaming. So you, did, you, did you try to scare him, Parker? Like, he rides barebacks for eight seconds to make money for a living. Did you try to put a little fear in him? I mean, I just wanted him to feel what it's like, uh, you know, we're kind of, the only difference between that is like in the pace car thing, you know, you have just one seat belt, so. When we race, we have the, the six seat belts that kind of keep you held in one place, but you still feel your body moving. And I just kind of want to get him to experience that, uh, you know, like the G forces and all that when you're going through the corners at that speed. Parker, for you, how did you get your racing career started? We mentioned, you know, Rocker started maybe a little bit different. He started in the wakeboarding side of things. Were you always, you know, in the race car from a young age? Uh, yeah, so my parents used to watch a lot of racing and it was just a way to uh, start spending more time with my family. So. I didn't come from a bunch of money racing and all that, or I was the first in my family to start racing. So it was just a way to spend more time together. So I just started racing sprint cars when I was seven years old and it's just been up from there. Yeah. So are you gonna get on the bareback horse? I know that's a pretty pretty big ask, but do we get on a baby bareback horse and Rocker gives you a couple, maybe four seconds instead of eight? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, that would be a long conversation. He, yeah. he's, he's doing too, too good racing. I think we'll just keep him in a car. On the flip side of that, Rocker, what's the chance we can get you in a car? I know that uh, obviously you guys took the pace car around, but how about one that goes a little faster with some with some competitors? Dude, any there? day of the freaking week, I would get in one of those things. I think I think we go to Charlotte and we set it up. You can go to like the driving experiences. You do like dude 165, 170 in an experienced car to Charlotte. I think we can set that up. Oh, just say when because, dude, like I mean, it it's so it's NASCAR is so up my alley of I, I don't i don't know what it is about it but it's just the need for speed i mean it's just uh bareback riding it's um you know it's it, it's all i all i want to do right now but whenever whenever things are said and done i, I might try my luck i don't know <laughs> so, so parker explain to our fans i mean the amount of horsepower you're dealing with and how fast you guys typically go i know different tracks have different speeds based on the size of the track but kind of explain to our listeners what you go through when you're in that car yeah, the, the cars are 30, 3,400 pounds, around 700, 750 horsepower. And uh, like here at Phoenix, we'll do like one, 170 and do the corners, or 160, 170 around there, and do like the entry of both the corners. And then uh, through the corners, probably doing 120, 130. So probably average 145 around there with 38 other cars on the racetrack with you. So then we've got to places like Daytona, you do, you do 200 with all of you in a pack together, you know. A couple inches apart from each other which is why you see all the big wrecks of daytona because it's so close and then places like michigan you go to a mile and a half or two mile track that's more spread out but you do 202 203 into the corners i'm assuming it's almost like riding a bike i mean you say 200 most people never go that fast in their life for any reason but does it just become almost automatic and same way with rocker like you just get on and you become used to it yeah i think that you, once you get experience with that stuff it comes more you know naturally you don't actually you know realize the speed that you're going and i think it all is relative to where you're at like like daytona like we talked earlier like 
you're going so you're going 200 but it's so big at two and a half miles a big oval that like you feel like you could eat a sandwich or do other stuff during the during the back stretch there if you're by yourself so it's uh all relative to where you're at the 31 yeah. uh, go ahead rocker uh you know what i mean it's just like uh just like bareback ride you spend all your off time training and uh getting ready whenever you're learning you know it, it, you feel like whenever you get on you're thinking so much but whenever you whenever it clicks and that light that light bulb goes on of I got I have this you know somewhat figured out whenever I get on a bareback horse now it's like I don't think about anything I just nod my head go don't think about anything and it's all muscle memory I, I, I assume you know driving a race car is the exact same thing you just grab a hold of the steering wheel and grind some gears and haul ass. So we know that the 31 Funk Away car is, you know, ending their regular season now, but Rocker, you're getting ready to go to the, the Super Bowl of Rodeo, 10 nights in Las Vegas for the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo. How are you feeling? Uh, you ready to put on a, a show for those fans at the Thomas & Mack Center? Oh man, I'm, I'm so ready. This is my, my first year getting ready for the finals, you know, not in a wheelchair. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's, it's been good. I've been doing all the things that uh, I didn't get to do last year before the, before the finals, you know, actually, you know, getting on the bucket machine and you know just doing uh, the things that I should have been doing last year that I couldn't um, so I'm, I'm, I'm super pumped and uh, excited to knock this finals out. Sure so Parker I'm assuming that the end goal obviously our NFR is the Super Bowl but that's to be cup racing one day right that's part of this dream? Yeah I think to be here for the cup race in the final four to race for a championship I think is always every driver's goal so my first year I think we've done good and all the team and everyone with sport from Funkway I think we've done good this year for it being our first year, I think we're only going to get better, and hopefully in a couple of years we're here racing for a championship. So we were talking earlier, the smell of some of these guys, like you go in these races, the fire suits probably don't smell, they smell like a wrestling locker room, probably in a high school wrestling locker room. Rocker, so you're going to try out some of this funk away, try and get some of the smell of you bareback guys too? Yeah, so I was I was actually asking him if he washes his race suit, or I don't know what they call it, but uh, it's called a fire suit? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was like, uh, do you guys wash your fire suit? Cause uh, a lot of bareback riders, bull riders, bronc riders, a lot of the guys don't ever wash their riding pants because, you know, you don't want to wash the good luck away. He's like, no, we uh, we actually wash them every week because a lot of guys pee in them while they're racing. I'm like, you know what, maybe I'll uh, just get like a, I don't know, a bag or something or a Gatorade bottle. <laughs> that may be a good idea. Well, guys, we really appreciate your time. We know that you're busy, uh, both of you at the top of your sport, so we appreciate you sitting down with us here. Thank you. Thank you. There it is. Uh, great, great interview there, Tracy. We'll have much more great interviews coming your way, but that's going to do it for the Shoot Bosses. We will wrap things up. Until next time, keep on rodeoing.